Texas. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle, O-R-C-L-E dot com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle dot com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, it's kind of like a bunch of golly goop here, but, you know, it's, it's not real bad. Uh, um, actually, we'll start with chart one, which is a monthly chart. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we showed this probably last time, and it's just, it's just you got a reminder what, what's going on here. But any anytime the uh, monthly SBX closes above the upper Bollinger Band by 50% of the trading range, normally the next month, even uh, even though it could be the next couple, three months, is usually at least a consolidation, if not a down. And um, that's what happened last February, or this you know month ago, February. We closed about halfway up. The market is, is still higher here, um, but the month's not over yet. But also, you, you go to the, the second window up from the bottom. Yes, is the S XPX VIX ratio, and where the SPs made a higher high, that ratio made a lower high. Uh, so you got minor divergences here. I'm bullish, uh, but. But I think the market needs to create some energy here with getting the trend back up, you know, into panic levels to get, build some energy to push the market forward. And I think that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, no, listen, it, it, it's amazing, man. I mean, even today, every time this market goes red, it's like, okay, give it a few more hours, and all of a sudden, it goes green. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, you know, we got the market now up, you know, about. 0.3% or uh, yeah, about 0.3%. You know, you got a trend right now uh, at 0.1.7. Oh my so, God. Yeah, so you're, you're building energy here. You know, is this a takeoff? You know, I'm thinking we're this week's kind of going to still be kind of up and down. And maybe next week we get going. I don't know. But it's, I still think this month, you know, which we got, uh, well, this week and next week. So basically we got two more weeks before this month ends or a week and a, a, yeah. week, a week and a half. And I think the market still could stall here in this vicinity. But I like to see, you know, even a minor update. We got a trend 1.67. So Oh, it's a, bullish. listen, what Tim's talking about here, folks. Yeah, look at this. I was going to put this in front of your chart for one second, Tim. This is insane. That it's not insane because we know the, the amount of selling, but this is saying there's a lot of selling going on, folks. One point six seven, but guess what? Someone's yeah. buying it. <laughs> but that's that's very unusual, which is really cool. Yeah. Wow. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, and actually, the more days you get that, the more bullish it becomes. That's the reason why you yes. go to chart two. Okay. And that's that. The second window up from the bottom is a ten day trend, and uh, back on March eleventh, which is what about. A week ago, or a little over a week ago, the the trend did. Uh, I think the low was uh, point uh, point nine one or point nine two. Yes. Didn't quite get to nine point nine, but close enough. I mean, this is not exact science, but you know, if you get in that range of point nine, you usually get a stall in the market. And so I drew the red lines every time yeah. uh, the trend ten day trend got to point nine or lower. Okay. And all of them uh all of them but two came or uh, you know, the ones I drew here all came at you know, a consolidation phase that usually lasted a week, some lasted longer. Uh but they all came near near highs. And so and if you look over since, you know, nine or March eleventh which is over a week ago, the market really hasn't gone in anywhere. I know. So that point nine range yep. on the 10-day trend, that does have some merit. That's what I'm trying to point out. Yeah, no, I can so, see that. that. There's no doubt, man. Yeah. Yeah, so can you get a big pullback? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but usually the uptrend stalls, and that's what's going on right now. And, you know, we got and the I'm, Fed tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So Yeah. Yeah, what? The Federal Reserve has this statement and news conference at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Oh, that's the right. Statements at 2 o'clock. Yeah, maybe that's what the market's kind of waiting for. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it's, you know, it's interesting, Tim, which I was looking for, looking at. You know, I know that, you know, the, the Qs were um, weaker than the S&P this morning. But those Qs have that high volume high out there, you know, the day we gave it up. Uh, going back, what is that, the twenty? no, the 6th, uh, no, the 8th of March. So it's like, you know what, man? That thing might want to get tested again, too. 
You know, because that was yeah. big volume. It was 72 million up there. We gave it up on price, but it's like, you know what? Because we rejected lower price out here today, and that's going to be on light volume. So it's like, okay, man. Are you going to yeah. spike that yeah, baby yeah. tomorrow? So. Yeah, so yeah, the, those high volume highs are always tested. As a matter of fact, that kind of keeps it big. You know, if you go up and test it, the first test may be on a lighter volume, but that second test, the rules are off. So if you ever t yeah. so you see a high volume high, say 100 million shares, and you go up test it on 80 million shares, it usually backs off. But if that backs off kind of light and goes up against that previous high again, those rules don't apply. They actually. So the more times you test a, a, a buying climax high, the the least resistance it has. I'll put it that way. Yeah, no, I, uh, I can see that, man. It's got, this is yeah, going to be... So, anyhow, yeah. But anyhow, anyhow, getting back to this chart, chart number two. Yes. I think and I'm hoping we can get a 10-day trend back up close to 1.2 area okay. or somewhere in that vicinity before the market takes off. And, you know, that could happen over the next uh, few days that... Uh, I don't know, you know, if we get a couple of days like 1.64. Sure. If you get two days in a row to add up to three, you got to be long. So, Which is great uh, to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so tomorrow, I don't know what, what to be. But anyhow, this building, there's no top here of any consequence. Uh, but can the sideways move, move a little bit longer? Possibly. So let's go to chart three real quick. Okay. Uh, chart three is, this is pretty useful too also, which is the second window down from the top is the XP, SPX tilt ratio. So it measures the equity market, or compares the equity market to the bond market. Yes. And so those, so that's pretty much everything. You know, you got it the is. equity market, you got the bond market. And those two, and those two dance together pretty uniquely, I guess you might say. Yes. And, and the top window is the 10-day RSI. So it's a two-week RSI, not a 14-day RSI. And so when that gets up around uh, 0.7, as when I threw that, when I sent that over to you, it's 0.67. So it's not an exact number, but if you get up around 0.7, normally the market kind of just stalls, and all those blue lines there across the chart are times when the RSI of this ratio got, you know, around 0.7 and higher. Okay. And we've kind of been hovering around that 0.7 over the last several days. Yes, we have. To me, uh, so that's kind of showing that we got some resistance here. You know, ideally for a, a bullish move, you like to see the RSI drop down around 0.30. Okay. Because that's where uh, the bombs come in at. So I'll hold. Uh, awesome. Just stay right there. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate the growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow. The Dow's up 263. NASDAQ's up 34. S&P's are up 18 and a half. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow up at 276, Nasdaq's up 39, S&Ps are up 20. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Moore. And Tim, I'm on the third chart right now. All right. Um, well, yeah, well, I'm hoping, well, this chart says the upside is kind of just a resistance here. If the market keeps rallying, that RSI is going to stay up there around that 70 range. Okay. So, the reason, so I'm thinking that's just... You know, there's not much upside here, at least not right now. If we can back off below 50, then I think you can get a rally going. But if it stays up around close to 70, you know, you could maybe touch a new high, but chances are it's not going to go far. Let's stay in some kind so, of consolidation, right? And because, yeah, you know, when, right. you, when you do look at where we're at, now this is really intriguing, too, because you, you were talking about this, Tim, even in February when, you know, the, the S&P did go... Um, you know, above the middle Bollinger Band, uh, you know, but when we look at this market, I mean, we've been in the exact same place now for two and a half weeks. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, we haven't moved, you know, any, yeah, you're right. You know, March is, uh, are you going up in March? Uh, now we're up a little bit. I guess you can see by the monthly chart. So, But, you know, it's not running away. Today's volume's going to be, you know, it's like, pretty, really light compared to yesterday. Right. And, and this is a week after option expiration week. A lot of times you can see consolidations. So it's kind of a much, you know, I wouldn't bet short or wouldn't bet long right here because there's not evidence to suggest, you know, any direction, really. Yeah, no, so, I'm with you. I, trust me. <laughs> this is not a market. So, to me, it, it, you just can't sell this market right now. That, that's, and it, listen, I love going short, but this is not a market to short, man. 
That's just not. It's, yeah, it, you know. it's just. It's you know, it's just it's, you know. Anyhow, I'm not really a big bet right here, so I don't see anything. So right. let's, let's go to chart four. Okay. And the, this is going to be kind of quick succession. What's going to go on? But these these signals I'm going to present are the signals for the bigger trend. And so these signals happen maybe once a year, you know, maybe once every three, four years. Yes. So these signals are pretty rare. Okay. And when you do get them, you kind of pay attention to them. And anyhow, the first one is the uh, weekly inflation-deflation ratio, RSI. chart goes back to 2015. And uh, the red circles on the chart show the times when the RSI fell below uh, RSI for this Inflation to inflation ratio on the weekly time frames falls below 30. So it's on a weekly, not a daily. So they're, they're pretty rare for this to happen. They all come at basically major lows. And the last, and we got a, just a signal here back in, uh, I think about early March. I forgot exactly what it was. But yeah, yeah the last time we got a signal was that October of 2000. And we're talking the gold market now, too, by the way, folks. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyhow, that there's a signal here, you know, uh, just been triggered. It uh, looks like about trickle about mid February to go off to the right there. You can see that chart. Well, anyhow, yes. So anyhow, this thing's on a bicycle. It really hasn't come off the lows yet. So let's flip to the chart number five. Okay. Because we're going to kind of go through quickly. This chart goes back to 2017. This is a totally type different indicator, and it's a bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash. GDX. Yep. So it's another ratio, but it's usually bullish percent index for the gold miners index. And all the blue lines across this chart are when the RSI for this ratio falls below 30 and turns up. And we've got a signal on this one and back in February. It's gone up some. But, you know, it's, it's another major signal. Last time the signal occurred was uh, basically October of last year, August and October of last year. I got it marked there. But Sometimes you don't get a signal for a year or two, and all of a sudden you get, uh, well, you get about one or two a year. That You get one maybe a year, two at most. So we got one this year. We got kind of one last year. It's kind of a double buy. And before that, there was another double buy in 2022, then one in 2021, and one in 2020. So it's a pretty rare signal to get it, but it's on a buy signal. So let's go to chart six real quick. We're okay. going to put... We're going to summation all this at the end. And uh, so if you go to chart six, this is a weekly XAU gold ratio. Yes. So it's a, it's a total different type of indicator. It has no relationship with the other two. And all it is is the weekly RSI of this ratio falling below 30 and turning up. And this one also gives a signal, you know, some, about once a year, sometimes less. Sometimes it'll go three, four years without a signal. But, you know, we just got another one um, probably late February, early March. It's kind of an early signal. RSI fell below 30. It's gone up. And uh, these are multi-month signals. They're not like you, yes. up, you can have a, a consolidation for a week or two. But normally you're, you're higher on this signal six months from now or even a year from now. So these signals are not short-term at all. They're a lot of times multi-month, sometimes multi-year signals. So what I'm saying is, let's go down to the bottom of the chart okay. on the weekly XAU. Yep. And I got a blue line crossing there. I see that, yes. So so anyhow, so uh, hang on one second. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So anyhow, I got a blue line crossing there. So to get through that blue line, you know, the Weisskopf method, you have to have a sign of strength right. to, to break above a resistance area. Well, that blue line on the XAU is a resistance area. So we're almost up to it. Well, this signal on the XAU gold ratio is, is, is fairly new. We probably, at a minimum, got a six-month rally here. Well, if the market rallies for six months at a minimum, chances are the XAU will be above that line. Yes, right? that's for sure. Yeah. So, well, to get above that line, you need a sign of strength. Right. So what I'm saying in my newsletter, I think the market is actually going to get stronger here in the coming months because it's going to break that trend line on the XAU. And to get through that trend line, you have to see a sign of strength. 
So I'm thinking you're going to see a sign of strength on the XAU and the gold stocks sometime over the next several months. Right. So the market's not going to get weaker here. It's actually going to get stronger here because of all these three signals. They're all coming in approximately within you know, a couple of three weeks of each other. And you know what gets and interesting, multi, too? Multi-month signals. Yeah, and what gets interesting, folks, is that the XAU is trading 116. Well, that line that Tim has, the top of that line, that is 171. <laughs> so you break that with force, wide price spread, accelerated volume, 171 is coming at us, man. Yeah, that's pretty wild, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Yeah, so something is a big uh, is starting to form here. So let's go to chart seven and see where we are right now. Okay. Okay, chart seven is a short-term indicator. It kind of just measures the up, ebb, the flow of the market, and and basically the bottom one is the 18-day average up down volume, and the next window up is the 18-day average of the advanced decline, and that's all it is. The pink areas. Or when these two indicators are below minus 10, the blue areas are in indicators when they're above minus 10. And so the minus 10 on both indicators, as long as those two indicators are above minus 10, the uptrend, short-term uptrend, is intact. I see. So that's okay. what all that means. So even though we've got a little consolidation going on here, both those indicators are well above minus 10. So. Well, listen, man, we appreciate the education. You have a great one, safe one. We get the Fed meeting tomorrow, and then we get you right back here Thursday, Tim. All right, we'll talk to you then. Okay, man, have a Thanks great a one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.